what actually happened to WoW in 2023? Now, this looks like a, a, he's hinting at some kind of divergence from the lore as it was going when uh, Metzen came back in. And I've talked about this before. I do think Metzen kind of decided to rewrite the lore, which is why we've seen some some eh, questionable choices made in the Dragonflight storyline, where basically it felt like things were being rerouted in a way. Uh, I do think Metzen came in and changed the direction of the lore and the way it was heading, finally readdressing the sword and everything else that's going on, and uh, the World Soul Saga, of course, is going to be his baby. But let's see uh, what Belular has figured out in terms of how the plan has changed. All right, I'm fairly sure the Dragonflight actually changed its Pepe plan final boss guarantee, yes. I mean, if you take a look at the launch storylines, and you kind of contrast them with how the expansion went, and you think about the sorts of things that <laughs> seem to be important in 10.0, or things that were perhaps foreshadowed, and then some out-of-game things like dev interviews, then you track them forward to the present day, and you see a lot of them were just dropped, never really mentioned again. Yeah. It's all quite strange, and I think that change coincides with a fairly massive thing, which is the three expansion plan that is to follow Dragonflight actually coming into being and right. that happening after the launch of the Dragonflight expansion. That is what we're going to talk about today. If you felt with this expansion that something has just not been quite right, well, hopefully you find today's video interesting just as you'll find today's sponsor interesting, who are actually working for me transition. right now. Spam mails, spam calls, they're a real problem, and it's all because of data brokers, whose trade is literally harvesting and selling your data. It sucks. Now, you've got the legal right to have your stuff taken down, but the downside is that takes hours, and it's a game of whack-a-mole. And that is where incogni.com forward slash Incogni, oh, that's a new in. one. Look they automate it for wow. you, and code Bellular Warcraft gets you 60% off an annual plan. I signed up and immediately they found me on 48 data brokers, sent 42 takedown requests, and completed six. The timing was just hilarious. Like the day I set Incogni you up, bitch. I got a spam you message bitch. from a recruiter. And then going through you know, I'm not the doing Incogni this. dashboard, I saw that my details <laughs> were on a platform for recruiters. That was not I sure me. as hell didn't put it there. I'm not calling the like advertisement down, a bitch. Have come from somewhere. Remember things like the big Equifax data breach? More recently, the Comcast Xfinity one that had oh, yeah, I got, 35 million accounts. I got an email the about that one. Hoover that stuff up, and they just pretty sure my data is circulating around China at this point, thanks to Xfinity. Thank you, Xfinity, for leaking all my shit. Make money off it, and it actually gets spooky. Like people can quite easily find your information in sites like Bean Verified, which is uh, yeah, not cool. And the thing is, even if you do a takedown request, no fans, your data can just pop up again. We're gonna do Mythic Raid today. Real I haven't opened my vault yet. I'm gonna open copy. it after this. They take your data down, and then they continually rescan so that they can keep it down. All automatically, so give him a shot today at incogni.com forward slash Bellular Warcraft, code Bellular Warcraft for an exclusive Use the code. 60% off discount. There it is. We've got to kick it off with context and staff. The context is pretty simple. The vast majority of people seemed to be particularly unhappy with the narrative direction of World of Warcraft. Yeah. Because yes, Makes in the sense. active WoW community, plenty of us are having a discussion about whether things were good or bad. The thing that we perhaps missed is, well, all of the people who were no longer playing World of Warcraft, who saw Shadowlands, thought it was a bit preposterous, saw the PC Gamer headlines about just how bad its narrative was, and therefore decided not to really touch the game. Sure. This is something that was decently recently spoken to by Holly Longdale in an interview she said, and do mind, she has been playing World of Warcraft since its original beta in the early 2000s. So she said that as a player, something was kind of feeling off, that the narrative somewhat lost its way yeah and i think this was like a that, common theme uh, at blizzcon that i was kind of surprised by that they did admit like some of this stuff in the past hasn't been that great and uh they know that people left i mean metzen literally starts his whole monologue about the uh world soul saga by saying like it's time to come home right like he understands a lot of players left the game and just don't play wow anymore so he was like giving this call to arms like it's time to come back this is world of warcraft get ready to play the game that you know and love again. Like he that was the whole theme behind his speech and uh it was it was a good one. 
He's a good speaker. Context in mind, we've got to talk about staffing up, as our first point. Don't worry, all of those juicy things about plot lines that were dropped, I'll get into that, but we've got to talk about the people <laughs> first. The most obvious one is Chris Matson. He returned to Blizzard be, as creative advisor in December 2022. Now, I'm aware not all of you will know everything about him. TLDR, he joins Blizzard way back in the day. He's doing art in Warcraft 1. He ends up doing a bunch of backstory for his drawings, and that essentially morphs into him having way more of a role in Warcraft 2, and then he basically ends up being blizzard story dude so he has right. a big tenure at the company and he ends up leaving after overwatch right and one of the final things that he worked on on world of warcraft funny enough was the battle for azeroth cinematic you know that cinematic that was really good and felt absolutely nothing like the expansion they yeah. went on to yeah fit. the one that like had nothing to do with the expansion whatsoever like sylvanas seemed totally into the horde and every it's a great horde leader at this point and then just everything diverges from here Damn, I never noticed all this freaking detail on the sword, too. This was badass. Uh, you know, because BFA was a narrative mess and the cinematic actually looked pretty cool. Anyway, by September 2023, Chris Matson was the executive creative director and was working full time on World of Warcraft. Right. He was not just doing some the return. advice and consulting in the franchise. Nope. He's uh, kind of got a day job now. Other people, like Holly Longdale, of course, started to take a little bit more prominence. And then BlizzCon made things pretty damn clear. But while BlizzCon was making things look rather clear and telling us about this whole three expansion arc, mm -hmm. someone was very clearly missing. That person was Steve Denuser. Now, that's a relevant person Get to talk Stevie. about because he was the past... Mr. Work From Home Stevie. If you don't know, I did a whole video about this. He claimed that part of the reason he left was because work from home had ended and he liked working from home. Yeah, he's a work from home Andy, so... <laughs> Hey, even though I really think you could imagine that he had an entire story laid out and then Metzen comes back in, kicks the door down and says, nah, fuck yo shit, we going back and doing this. They're probably an ego hit. You got to imagine a lot of these guys this high up in a company have big egos and he probably didn't like it. And he just, you know, saw himself out the door, even though Blizzard was kind of telling him, you should probably leave. You know, people at his level usually don't get fired or let go. They just, you know, they, they suddenly retire or they suddenly leave the company for whatever reason. That's what happened with him. The narrative director of World of Warcraft. He looks like a work from home, Andy. Starting um, some point in BFA, uh, doing that in Shadowlands. Yeah, he and liked the work from home. Dragonflight. Man. Now, per Towley, who is a streamer who knows loads of people at Blizzard, uh, well, the quote from Towley is that Dragonflight was Steve's baby. Yet, this expansion was uh, a narrative mess. It wasn't a disaster like Shadowlands. It was just a mess. It yeah. didn't really feel like it went to plan. Well, I think the reason why it wasn't a complete disaster like Shadowlands is because the, um, you know, Dragonflight has more background lore than Shadowlands does. Shadowlands was like blank slate of paper. They just wrote whatever the hell they wanted. And it got off. It got unhinged. And then they freaking tried to attach Lich King lore to it, which was a bunch of bullshit, and it kind of ruined that too. But anyways, um, at least with Dragonflight... You know, we have Alex Straza lore, Nors Dormu lore. All of these dragons already have cool background lore that was, uh, you know, they could build off of it. So that kind of helped the expansion not go too off the walls. But then we saw, you know, a lot of friendship and shit like that. And they, Dragonflight kind of teetered off a little bit towards the end. Pretty sure. That I will say Riddicron's a good villain, though. I do like him. Steve was working pretty heavily in 10. Denuser oh, lives near you, really? With you. <laughs> Seeing so many He's things probably in 10 and and how they didn't really seem to be taken forward does make me think that that vision changed. So what happened is we noticed there was no Steve Zanuser at BlizzCon, and that was pretty bizarre because he used to be the narrative director. Now, by that time, I had already privately heard that he was gone, but the word wasn't out yet. That word got out quite recently with his LinkedIn page being I mean, I mean, you already know we've got problems. Look at his banner. Literally a simp. The simpiest character ever put into the game, Nathanos. I mean, if your banner is Nathanos, you already know we got problems. That led to a whole wave of news Simp Thanos. and him doing an interview with PC Gamer, one where he essentially said that the move was intentional, it's time to move on to some new things, and that part of his decision was formed by wanting to stay in the city that he was in rather than relocating to California. So, I agree, Pumba. that's what he said. I know that I have heard things that would certainly suggest there's a bit more to it than that. Maybe some creative differences. Broadly, I think the PC Gamer interview is pretty much right. I do think that he left of his own accord. The thing is, I have heard one or two things that maybe suggest there's more to that story, but I basically don't have any details, and certainly not with a level of certainty that I'd feel comfortable uh, sharing in a public fashion. 
Now, one thing I did see which raised the eyebrow was somebody who was from his era who's no longer at the company making a series of posts that appeared to be airing grievances um, with Blizzard, Ooh. not Steve, to be clear. Um, but they ended up taking them down, and by the time that I saw that, uh, basically, they'd posted a tweet saying, yep, I've deleted all those. I will tweet about this later when I am not mad. And to my knowledge, there has been no follow-up. So who knows? Maybe there is a story. Maybe, Maybe it will he was come under out. an NDA. What do we do with that information? Well, certainly what we don't do is just go off half-cocked. Now, look, if you and I are hanging out in a pub and we've had a few beers, maybe we can talk shit about uh, theories and that sort of thing. But no, when I'm sitting down and it's on the channel, like, there's got to be a certain bar of evidence and hearing things from many, many, many different sources before I can feel comfortable actually talking about it. That's legit. Because accuracy and the truth is actually an important thing. My personal suspicion is that there was some sort of creative friction, I do believe, and the whole point of this video is that there has been some form of uh, major change or sort of reshaping to take existing plans and put them into the world yeah. soul you saga. Can, you can molds. sense it. What I do know, though, is this. You the can. I mean, even why did we even light the freaking beacons for the dragon flights? Like, that, that early, it does feel like they were too, like, the story at one point diverged from what it was going to be. I don't know. It, there, there are senses of unfinished storylines. Um, the Incarnates seem to take a front row seat, which makes sense. I mean, they are—they were the main villains, but the Eridicron storyline going into Zalateth and all that—the team up between them—that seems like the main tie into the World Soul Saga. And everything else early on in the expansion was kind of like, yeah, you know, kind of forget about that. Don't worry about that. They're friends. Everything's good. Everyone's you know making out and shit. We got a hey, look, we got a kiss in the game now. You know, uh, and uh, everything will be kind. Mal Malfurion's going to get laid, and uh, we're going to move on to uh, the World Soul Saga. How about that? Yeah, the Oath Stones. What the hell was the point of that? They didn't even they didn't get their powers back from them, which was like the intent behind it. But what did it do? Did it do anything? I don't know. And it seems like the story is that the Oath Stone story is scrapped. Don't know if that's true or not. I think it is, DJ. This makes sense based on what we're seeing here in this video. That that probably was a denouser thing that Metzen came in and goes the hell are these dragon dildos doing here? Now, just f screw that story. We're not going to continue it. Get rid of it. That's probably what happened. Years have been the absolute worst in terms of WoW's narrative. And no, this is not just a Could thing you imagine? for the nerds. When I Could say you that, imagine he came back and he, it, like, we, we find Anduin in the war within cinematic, right? He's back. And it, it, Mitzen, Metzen walks into the door. Maybe he hasn't paid attention. I, I'm sure he did pay attention, but I'm just joking and saying maybe he didn't pay attention. He goes, so, uh... Where's the King of Stormwind? Where's Where's Anduin? Yeah, he, we left him in the Shadowlands. He did what? What the hell? Why would you do that? Why is he in the Shadowlands? Well, uh, you know, we he's kind of depressed. He's depressed. Fucking guy lost his dad and fought an entire war, and he got through that. Why he's depressed now? Okay, that's fine. Uh, where Where's Sylvanas? I can use her. And now she's in the Shadowlands with Anduin. He, what? She's depressed. Why? Uh, she got a piece of her soul back from a bald guy with huge... Oh, God. Okay. So they're both depressed. They're in the, they're in the Shadowlands. All right. Uh, we're going to have to kind of... I'm going to have to pull some other big character out here to try to lead the story here. Um, the Night Elves. We haven't talked about them in a while. How about, um, you know, we burn their tree. Now. Let's see. Mal Malfurion. Where's Malfurion at? Can I use Malfurion? He's in the Shadowlands. Why? Why is Malfurion in the Shadowlands? What the fuck is everybody doing in the worst freaking thing that ever created in World of Warcraft history? Why do we leave so many main characters in the Shadowlands? Well, he's sitting there replacing a dragon or something so she could come to our, our realm. Okay. All right. So I, I imagine Metzen like just scratching his head like, oh, shit. All right. All right. I'm just going to bring Anduin back in a cinematic. Malfurion's going to come back and fuck the shit out of Tyrande and we're going to fix this. We're going to fix this all. We're going to just get it right. I'm going to bring all the characters back. I don't know why we left half these people in a freaking expansion that nobody likes, uh, but we're going to figure this out. Okay? World Soul Saga. Let's go. I mean, how the game universe feels, right? <laughs> like, exactly yeah, I there's that. loads of raiders who don't know a single shred of WoW's lore, but you know what? 
whenever something is banging for cool eternity, yeah. and big and, you know, all, all of those things that Legion did well, they, for some reason, just end up enjoying it that little bit more. Anyway, BFA3 now has been the single most damaging period to World of Warcraft's narrative ever, without uh, question, essentially. So, yeah, I think that any major change is going to involve some degree of friction. The core thing, though, is that there are new creatives at the top. It's not just Chris Matson. We've since found out that longtime art director Chris Robinson is, per an interview with John Haidt, also working closely with Chris Matson. So who knows what this duo of Chris's will cook up. Yeah, the Chris What we overall know, though, is that War Within was planned least, yeah. before Chris Matson returned. World Soul Saga is, from everything that I've heard, Chris Metzen's thing. That basically means that 10.0's content was very likely written... Yeah. And could you imagine, too, he was probably like, so, um, it's all right, everybody's in the Shadowlands, that's fine. What happened with the sword? And everyone just kind of, <laughs> what, what sword are you talking about, sir? The damn sword that's bigger than any mountain in the game. The fucking sword that a giant demon lord... Sargeras put into the planet. I left it there for you guys so you could use it in the story. What happened with the sword? We haven't really addressed it. We've kind of just left it there. It's just sitting there. So you're... T Chris is like, you're telling me the planet is just bleeding out right now. I left a giant sword on the side of the planet and you've chosen not to address it in any way, shape, or form in the story. That is correct, sir. All right. All right. I got an idea for the cinematic. We start with the sword. Anduin's back, we start with the sword. I don't know what the fuck you guys have been doing, but we're going back to what I was doing. <laughs> and that's it. Most certainly was written with the war within. From what I've heard, rumors are actual Dragonflight ending involved Elune and the mother Oathstone, but considered the narrative of World Soul Saga, this is retconned to Azeroth so it's as to maintain a mystery of Elune a bit longer. The story that uh, this is this is Metzen's doing, that makes sense. That makes sense. I definitely, there's a lot of hints that Elune's going to be very relevant in the World Soul Saga, and I, I think he was right to do what he did. Yeah, let her, let her remain a secret. Secrets are good. Eventually reveal it, that's fine. But yeah, he, he, I'm glad he did what he did. I don't think we needed Elune in this expansion. Mind, going back to Towley saying that Dragonflight was Steve Denuser's baby, you can then also assume that the original plan for the War Within was also his baby, and the narrative design of the game in Tano was steering in that direction. Thing is, though, World Soul Saga didn't <laughs> Jesus, exist Moishi. by then. That's the thing that's new. That's the thing that's different. So let's jump yes, into are. the Dragonflight that happened that just didn't really match the Dragonflight we expected. Dragonflight culminated with the Emerald Dream. That's a plotline that in a way is coming full circle from the Dream's initial introduction as being Yazera's realm. So Yazera kind of had to be there. Problem is, she was dead, but with Shadowlands, she was far from gone. Her return had been foreshadowed in patch 9.2.5, and almost immediately, Dragonflight decided to pull that thread, but it added something with Malfurion. For her to return, he must go. take her place. Some beta data mining made people think that he was going to die, so in and around that time, narrative director Steve Denuser tried to clarify in an interview saying that Malfurion would not be gone forever, but that he would return with two things. One, new perspective, and two, some new powers. Yeah, we yeah. didn't get any um, new powers. Those were the words of a man with a plan. At the time, he yeah. talked about Persephone spending six months a year in hell, all of that. Yeah, at least from what we've seen, uh, Malfurion's still the same Malfurion. He came back... You know, got that booty juice, and that's about it. We don't know what the hell happened to him in the Shadowlands. Maybe it'll get fleshed out more later on. But right now, like, he doesn't have a new weapon or anything. It's just Malfurion. Least same stuff. same Malfurion. Many almost expected a Malfurion coming out of Ardenweald that could do, I don't know, blue magic. <laughs> anyway, a year or so passed. In patch 10.2, Malfurion returned. With absolutely nothing... Of what Denuser suggested. He came back with no this huge... Power, he had the antlers. No interaction with the A-plot whatsoever. No new perspective that is unique with what he did, uh, you know, for the Winter Queen. Absolutely nothing. The kiss. He just came back and decided to retire. And I can't blame him. To me, that was bizarre. It felt like evidence, and it did go along with a general feeling that myself, Matt, and Jared, who, you know, we do a lot of the lore stuff in this channel. Look at them we, there and then look at the artwork. The artwork, yeah, the artwork's massive. Yeah, he's, but this isn't what he came, this is, this has never happened. This is what it was supposed to be. He came back regular, regular boy. Yeah, I don't, I don't see the difference. 
a new perspective that is unique. I mean, antlers can grow so, too. You know, Maybe he hasn't interview. trimmed them in a while. Absolutely I don't know. nothing. He just came no, back and not. decided to retire. I can't blame him. To me, that was Probably bizarre. Should. It felt like evidence, and it did go along with a general feeling that myself, Matt, and Jared, who, you know, we do a lot of the lore stuff in this channel, we all just felt this around the middle of Dragonflight, where it felt rushed, it felt sloppy. Do you remember how we learned the name of Amir Drasil? It was just a little teaser cinematic at the end of 10.1. Yeah, I'm gonna list it. Malfurion's return, though, was so the opposite of what Steve Denuser said it would be. Yeah, they got changed for given sure. Given his departure from the team, it got and changed. It seeming like a lot no of doubt. changes happened. Well, we we just thought, okay, this is an expansion that pivoted, and that made me think: Is there a reason behind the sloppiness of this expansion? Well, it's more than just Malfurion. One thing I've seen a lot of fans talk about is Vakthros, right? He used to be one of Malagos' seats of power, and uh, like with the Life Shrines or the Obsidian Citadel, it was a key part of the Isles. And it was there on our world map, this unique location, but one where very little happened. Do you guys remember we talked about Azure Span and I said how this looked like it was meant to be a raid based on how it looks on the map? Like this was supposed to be something bigger than it was? There's a lot of this going on in Dragonflight and it makes sense. World map, this unique location, but one where very little happened. Yeah. Now it was connected to the A plot a bit with Razagath and the level up experience, but it was kind of unclear as to why, and it was only really explained by clicking on a stone tablet you could find um, up in the tower. Of course, the Blues went on to have a story about family that actually landed, but uh, beyond that, there really wasn't that much. So who yeah. knows? There could yeah. be something here. Maybe Vakthros did have grander plans at one point. There really wasn't that much. So yeah, I, like I said before, the story here was... Uh, nothing really changed, like... I mean, we had we had the stuff with Razageth early on, but it seem it's seemingly like uh, there was more importance meant for this zone, Azure Span, in, in general, than we actually got in the game. No, there could be something here. Maybe Vakthros did have grander plans at one stage, but what I'm a lot more sure on is Tyr. What was the point of Tyr? I have no idea. I mean, I'm yeah. glad he's back, but look at it in game. He had zero connection to the A-plot of the Dragonflight expansion. And I just do not buy that that was the original plan. Especially the, given a lot... Uh, the tier quest line still could become relevant. I feel like it's uh, they're trying to tie it in with some of the old god stuff that we recently saw. Uh, what's his name? Oh, man. The old god, the the whole... We, we witnessed him like basically sacrifice the sacrifice himself, blast that old god away. <laughs> that old god was actually relevant to Zalateth. She consumed his remains at one point during the um, Legion quest lines, right? And that was part of her thing was like, oh, the the cultists were trying to resurrect it, and she tells the player who has Zalateth that, oh, we should consume the remains or something like that. Yasharaj, no, it wasn't Yasharaj. The, the, there's a name for that. Um, that the, 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 it's not an old god. It's like a... An, a old god entity that tier you know he does the tackle into the lake it explodes and shit like that and that's cinematic where it's it's disguised itself as alex Strauss on the cinematic a lot of the more direct interacting with sort of titan forged characters as the dragons were trying to work out how to get their power back it just seems a lot of that was completely oh, it, it was storming like crazy now, last night it hailed and everything the new hands behind the wheel they were only really Zakesh, starting to figure yes, out I think what his name that was lore meant for the world soul saga's new direction so perhaps tears silence is a sign that they weren't really, really got, quite ready to reveal True. things or to use him but speaking of dragonflight launch there's another weird thing the oath stones our motivation from the waking yeah, this shore is exactly what, I said. what the hell happened with this shit? was to empower the oath stones of each flight and to activate the mother oath stone. What is an oath stone? What do they do? How know. do they work? We Who knows? Know. And that's a question that we thought even... for a while these were like the five torches to light our way. You remember that, like that old uh, that Nazoth line? Um, I thought maybe that's what that was, but like I didn't understand what they were for. We and we still don't. <laughs> I think that's it. We're done with them. Doesn't matter because they were. We lit them. They didn't work. That was it. Forgotten and never yeah. mentioned by other characters beyond 10.0. Yes, each dragon spent all yeah. of this time trying to restore. They're basically their a quest power, mechanism. Restore their oath stone in 10.0, and they just didn't mention them anymore. I mean, these feel like an even more poorly explained version of you know the jailer hunting his sigils. Yeah, weird, disjointed. They made a big deal out of it only to do absolutely nothing with yeah, it. Yeah, nothing no came with them. 
take a character like Nos Dormu. I mean, what we expected is that events would sort of kick off the long-awaited turn to Morazond, but instead we got a caper by a Ritacron that involved proto Nos Dormu turning into Morazond, not yeah. our Nos Dormu because he was outside. It was weird. And then by the very end, well, we essentially just reset his plot. Morazon's death in the Cataclysm is still his death from everything that we know, and our Nos Dormu hasn't turned into Morazon yet. We haven't seen that happen. And that's all in service of Eridicron dropping by to yeah, tell us that basically actually vampy, that's what happened with the Elfstones. Franchise wide villain. And he goes through the void portal, and we all think, huh, that was a bit interesting. Didn't expect that. And that with Eridicron is bizarre especially in the light of Ian Hasakostas' words. You see, Ian said in an interview, I believe before Dragonflight came out, that we would actually have a good idea of who this expansion's final boss would be by the end of 10.0. Now, by the end of 10.0, everything pointed to a Riddicron. I do not buy that anyone would have thought that yeah. Farak would be the end villain by, uh, I know, agree. by stage in 10. It probably was supposed to be a Riddicron, and then Metzen decided it was going to be a thread that he carried through from Dragonflight just to kind of make the Dragonflight storyline more relevant, you know, or or at least have some relevancy towards the World Soul Saga. And it, I think it was a good choice. I think it's going to be, it's going to play out pretty well. The more and more to me... It but looks- I did say, when we killed Farak, I felt like it was very anticlimactic. Like, he's just dead. Nothing came of it. Viranath, who is his supposed sister, doesn't even give a shit that she, he died. She's just, like, talking about her new powers with the other dragons, dragon aspects. And uh, meanwhile... Her brother's corpse is just laying there behind her, and she doesn't even acknowledge it. The whole thing was kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, Farak is dead, and uh, the expansion is over. Just Moving like on. that shift happened, that it happened quite shortly after 10.0, and that's maybe why some things changed a bit. I mean, hell, even just think of the very messy nature of this expansion's middle period, you know? The narrative of 10.1 mostly being a family drama with, oh, yeah, you know, black environmental things like this entire boss room posing the they just mo- did nothing they, yeah, that's right this they, what, what even came with this boss room no mysteries revealed sakareth reaching out into the shadow like nothing no voice lines from that nothing happened uh, that's a lot of weird un- untold stories in this expansion. for some weird reason no character in the game even comes powers close one to hell of a drug is- like that was bizarre Ten one just yeah, boy, wasn't yeah. interested no in its most interesting elements. Okay, that was a weird sentence, but still, you get my point. Thoroughly bizarre. And then take Viranoth. We all expected her to probably end up being our ally, but, I mean, she turned so quickly. So yeah, quickly. that story happened very fast. organic as a point of the story. So my broad point here is fairly simple. Dragonflight, as it was set up in Tenno just as full of missed opportunities. And a lot of things that seemed to matter barely ended up mattering, like yep. the Oath Stones, yep. or perhaps like all that time they spent setting up Decay with Brackenhide Hollow. Oh my God, that that's right. Going forward. What the hell happened with that? Yet for all of these small to medium-sized questions, well, the World Soul Saga at BlizzCon did kind of make it all make sense. The bridge from Dragonflight to the War Within via Khazalgar fit, because of course the War Within would have been in production before Dragonflight launched. And of course that was the case. Dragonflight was always going to lead into the War Within. That hadn't changed. What had though, I believe, is the three expansion arc that would follow, because we pretty much know that comes from Chris Metzen, and he only came back after 10.0. And that, I believe, is fundamental to Dragonflight's unclear direction and questions both left unasked and unanswered. What we're left with though, is a very well-stocked narrative toy box and new direction. Yeah, are the dark times over? Are the dark over? times over? I sure That's hope so. probably what you're wondering. And to be honest, tying this video together has been really hard. Um, I've ranged from doing narrative summaries to lore predictions, but really I don't think that actually matters too much. I think the question that, I mean, I have as a fan and you probably have is just, look, will it suck? Is there well, actually a direction? Well, obviously, I can't tell you that because it hasn't happened yet, but here's how I feel in the I, issue. I do feel like the three expansion layout is going to create a more cohesive story that doesn't feel rushed, that feels well thought out, well planned out, and will you know reveal itself over the three expansions to be a good story. That's my hope. That's what I think a three expansion storyline will bring us. 
We'll have to wait and see that. Whatever had been going on at Blizzard wasn't working, right? BFA was a mess. Yeah. And Shadowlands sucked. To Shadowland, be honest, I mean, maybe because Shadowlands was so bad, I actually look back on BFA kind of fondly now. I do. It didn't just suck in implementation. Its ideas were bad. It was barking up the wrong tree. It was not the right creative the war was bad. Torghast was bad. Fundamentally. So to me, the it Lich feels war like was bad. the middle of Dragonflight is almost an older vision of what Dragonflight could be, somewhat being sacrificed so that the World I Soul agree, Saga B&B. could make sense. Maybe that's Same the sort of bad. parachuting Veridicron out of this expansion and uh, way over to the future. And I think that's probably a good move because let's be real, Riddicron's um, actually pretty damn great. Yeah, that's I think I'm he's feeling. cool. Yeah, I like Riddicron's great. Zalatath, great. The war within cinematic, that was pitch perfect. I think that was probably some of their finest work ever. Yeah. I Our agree. next expansion has many elements that feel core Warcraft to me. Earthen, Nerubians, fire and light powered paladins. After that, Quelphalas. I mean, holy yeah, shit. That's right? going to be great. Full fat Quelphalas, not just the sort of giant remade. TBC version. That's crazy. After that, a total revamp of Northrend. That sounds terrific. Agreed. This team's leadership is aware of the game's narrative problems. There have been fairly clear changes in direction. They've shown that they're able to listen to things. And unlike the past, it actually seems they do have a solid multi-year plan instead of just having some ideas and knowing what the next expansion will be. There's a plan. So to me... Everything looks up. To me, it just seems like the Warcraft team spent quite a lot of time without strong, big-picture, creative direction, both as a game and also sort of narratively. And I think Shadowlands really falling so hard in the game mechanics front, that just led to the mechanics improving. Like, we see that they listen. On the creative front, that's always a little bit harder. But I actually uh, as that. like Dragonflight rating has been good, Mythic Plus has been good, mechanics have been good, Dragon Riding has been good. Um, mechanically, they think the game is in a good spot. Uh, Story wise, it's recovering. It's recovering. That's how I feel. Think that they're open to that criticism. Open also, that. when are we getting playable Tuscar? Still going to happen before the end of the expansion, guaranteed, boys. A little surprise at the end. That feedback. There's what That's Holly right. has said. There's that. There's it that ends just how it began with a cinematic of a Tuscar. And that confidence and vision that they were projecting at BlizzCon. Uh, to me, that felt stronger. Not everything's perfect, but I do get a sense maybe. of vision from the game. I think that's maybe the thing it's been lacking. Who knows how the future will go? I think it'll go better than the recent past, though. I actually do think that is... Uh, Literally calls for hope. Hope or hopium? No more false hope, yeah, hopium. Okay, that's it for me. Let me know what you think. Do you think this expansion had a big pivot in the middle? I think it did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll see you next time. I agree. I, I think a big pivot did happen. It explains a lot of the unfinished stories, untold stories, weird changes in the direction that you can kind of feel, even though you don't see it maybe or understand exactly what happened. You could feel it in the storyline. Like you're like, whoa, we kind of went a di- different direction here. What's the reason? And there is no reason for it, because the truth is, they just did it. They just did it. But I think they did the right thing. I think the World Soul Saga is going to be a good storyline. I'm excited for it. Eridicron's a good boss. Titans, you know, revealing their truths. The Void, all that shit. I think it's going to play out pretty well, and I'm excited for it. The mechanics are going to be important to get right, obviously. You know, that that's going to have to happen in order for things to really work out in the expansion. Hero talents, stuff like that are going to be important, but they're iterating on it. They're listening to feedback. And uh, that's all we could ask for at this point.